shoes, which is in the happiest times of my life in the Army. They made a teaching instructor out of me. Because I was teaching people who hadn't been overseas, and I was. And you knew? And you taught uh, radio stuff? And taught for all the information training. All the you know, it's interesting, I mean, because you're talking about your experiences, a lot of people will come in and they'll say, gee, you know, my dad or my granddad won't talk about it. And I said, well, you can leave them alone, because... Good. And I absolutely have... My wife said I had nightmares when I first came home. I don't remember them. Yeah. But all I remember are... I mean, I can tell you dates. Here's people. Yeah. I have a friend of mine named Tommy Chris was from Las Vegas. Uh -huh. I found him. And I told him who I was. First, I had to remind him who I was. Oh. Then I had to tell him how we knew each other. Yeah, really? And, and then he said, I'm going to tell you something. Walked out of the Army, Air Force. Never look back. Don't know who my pilot was. Don't give it to him. That war for me was over. I'm still talking about it 63 years later. It's just a new personality. Isn't that the truth? And this is one thing that we've talked about, that there's some guys who don't want to have anything to do with it. Other guys are very significant. And the same, seeing the same, uh, what do you say, event affects different people different ways. This one man was saying that he never had a problem in his life, but one of the guys on his crew had nightmares for the rest of his life. My uh, co-pilot was from Arkansas, yeah. and uh, his name was, he just died recently, yeah. his name was Pietro Pino, everybody called him Pete. And um, I've been telling these stories for years, yeah. and I said, Pete's coming, and uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I think I told a few stories that are a little far-fetched, and I think some of these stories I'm telling you I'm lying. The reason I'm telling you that, honey, is when Pete starts to talk, it ain't going to be the same. Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay, so in comes Pete, and we both started to cry. It was like this. They were the truth. After all those years. And isn't it something, what's on our hard drive up here, and what can stimulate it? And one thing I'm amazed, these planes, people come out, and the stories, and the tears, the hugs, it's, it's awesome. And that's why I'm glad you're here, you know, for an assortment of reasons. But this is one of the best parts about volunteering, you know, is to meet people like you, you know. It's something else. And that's why we're here, you know. My pilot was 26 years old. I attribute my being here to him. He, he just was a good pilot. Some people drove. Some people drove their ships like they were trucks. Yeah, yeah. He drove it like it was a P-51. No, he had it. Okay. Just really in touch with the controls. He just, he just knew what he was doing. He used to piss Pino off because, you know, Pino was co-pilot. And he says, come on, you know, and he was first pilot and he wouldn't. He wouldn't. And when the plane finally crash landed on April the 8th, Pino and he put it together. That was the greatest thing that Pino still talked about it. Now, were you in the plane when it crashed? No. I'll be done. No, I wasn't. I in, in the book, magazine, it was written about that crash. Yeah. I was in it. Oh, really? Yeah, they had me in it. But uh, I I can't lie. It's, I, was, I was just... I had more stories to tell than the April the 8th. It was in Brunswick. That, uh, that Jonas Guinness was killed, and the two gunners were so they were so badly wounded that they couldn't couldn't bail them out. And and uh, Waller told everybody but those two to to bail out, and they did. And Jim Warren and uh, Charles Ray. Uh, we're laying back there, and Waller said, "We're bringing this plane in." Yeah, with the said, 
we had no landing gear. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And this was a tough he plane says, to land. Just can. Yeah. He says, you want to bail out? He says, I ain't bailing out with you with the controls by yourself. Yeah. So just the two of them. And he brought it down like it had wheels. No kidding. Yeah. And this was a tough plane to belly land, I understand. It was no wheels. It was, I saw the ship when it, you know. So, uh, Jimmy Warren, his wife wrote me five years later. Yeah. You know what he died from? Piece of shrapnel. Stayed no. in him. They didn't find it. Moved through his body and pierced his heart. No. Five years later. Is that's the end of my stories. I no, 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 no. I can lie. No. That's, uh, that's amazing. And that's what.